Greetings from London. This is Mariam Sharif and welcome to Star Mogul's podcast. Today's guest is a modern day alchemist. This is how I would best describe him. And we are talking about mental health and wellness from a man's perspective. So men, this is your edition this week. Um, and I'm honored to have um, Hafiz Sumani from Canada. Welcome Hafiz. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Great, great to have you. So um, we've connected on Instagram and you uh, name yourself as Hafiz Alchemist. So uh, what is your interpretation or your meaning of alchemist or alchemism? Alchemist, yes. Uh, so I was inspired by that after reading The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Yes. And, and what that reminds me of is is that when it comes to um, empowering ourselves, we have the, the ability to control how we how things affects uh, affects us, right? So it's uh, so so anything that uh, how do I describe it? So like as an alchemist, you turn lead into gold. Right? That's, that's right. The, yes, absolutely. It started right? off all with gold, didn't <laughs> it? The transformation into gold. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but what that means, though, metaphorically, is is uh, and experiences, right? So looking at the, the the silver lining of experiences into something that is empowered, as opposed to something that's negative. So that's yeah. how I see being an alchemist is like any situation that comes my way, right? I guess you could say like when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's like, exactly. So it's like that as an alchemist is like, I just turn things to gold. Like this situation here, okay, how is this going to benefit me? How is this going to amplify me in a way for the better? Yeah, so that's, yeah no, yeah. I, I loved your page and I really connected with it. And I always find such kind of inspiration and and I think uh, you know as as with age or experience and maturity um, the mm -hmm. spirituality kind of kicks in much much more than it has before and I really loved your page and and uh, you know and, and I think that we all have kind of um uh, an inner alchemist in us but it's mm -hmm. really how we kind of operate on a day-to-day -day basis so um tell us about your journey what did you study when you were at university and and is this something of spirituality that you um or is something of interest or are you completely far-fetched from what you studied okay so yeah i'd say my journey began so uh I was an athlete. I did track and field. Uh, I was, uh, so I had this athletic. Oh, right. Yes. So I had this identity as this athlete. This is who I am. And this is what I do to be accepted, to be loved, to be enough. Um, and I was really good at it. I was uh, ranked top 10 in the country uh, in, uh, in the 400 meters uh, nationally in Canada. Uh, while I was also in university, I was competing. Uh, with the team as well too and just traveling all around Canada uh, so that was so that was the main catalyst for me wow. to um, into my journey and at the same time I was studying business I, I graduated right. with a marketing degree as well so uh, it wasn't after the 2012 uh, Olympic trials which was in in the city I was living in Calgary right. um, that uh, after a series of injuries and it was, I was at a crossroads. It's like, okay, well, what's, what's next? What am I going to do now? Like, do I keep training or should yeah. I move on? So I was in a bit of a crisis. And even though like I graduated university, okay, I didn't make the Olympics, my hopes and dreams, my perception of that was, was shattered. And I didn't, I was is that, lost. Is, is the Olympics exactly what, is that what your main goal? Was that what you, what had your heart set on? That yes. is exactly what you were doing. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I trained for about seven years. It was, it was like a full-time job. I was training six days a week. Wow. Um, yeah. There's, there's the training, there's the weightlifting, there is nutrition, hydration, physiotherapy, doing yoga, mental, like so many things that were, yeah. that my life was, was around while yeah. balancing school and, and working part-time. So. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. So then that didn't obviously take off that that kind of ended like you said with an injury yeah and then what went through your mind at that moment in time or during those that those course of weeks or days what what happened and what did you think then what what came to you so i've 
during my my track career i've i've had lots of injuries lots right. of setbacks like i have sat out a whole season because of a pulled hamstring so i would be like okay i'll come back stronger so i had this so i had a lot of and, and this deep belief that I am like I have this this belief in me that I I can make it yeah and that fire kept me going um until so yeah in, in 2012 after that whole thing collapsed with with injuries and everything and I was just I, I felt myself feeling very fatigued like I was like mentally drained um even like, like my spirit was drained as well too and it was such a a devastating uh, loss for me because one, I was also in the spotlight as well too, right? There was like, I was in the news and they're writing articles right. about me, Olympic. So all this, so being in the front line, being in the head in the spotlight as well too, was something that I was like, whoa, this was a shock in my nervous system. Right. And, and also like my, my uh, teammates as well too. And, and my coach as well too, they didn't like, it was so much exposure. We didn't know how to handle it. Right. <laughs> so that was also a factor as well of like oh my gosh like I feel like I'm a failure I'm not like this sort of negative chatter and I didn't have anyone re really to talk to about it um so that was the state that I was in I was like okay what am I gonna do and I was like happy and sad and and uh I went to see uh, a doctor a, a psychologist and they uh prescribed me some some happy pills to try out right. and yeah some in that moment something in me was like no this isn't okay. right like this is this is uh yeah. this is something i'm gonna get through um like i can focus very well you know and i can put my mind to things and get things done like i yeah. like i i'm not i don't think i have like a mental disorder or no anything i think like that's that. the easiest solution isn't it obviously yeah. that's that's the, the the quick fix isn't it but it's not it, really the long-term solution really is exactly. it exactly yeah exactly so yeah. So something in me was like, no, there, there's something there, there's another way to, you know, I'll, I'll get through this, but I'm, it's not going to be through this way. Not, not through the, you know, taking meds yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so I, I, I remember like, uh, <laughs> I mean, I must have to, I'm, I must point out there that yeah. it takes quite uh self-awareness for you, for one to even approach someone to, to speak with, or, you know, to consult because, that's quite a brave act in itself and not many mm -hmm. men would you know it, it's it it's one of those emotions that you kind of you know swallow and you don't mm -hmm. want to discuss so it's uh, what made you go and consult someone it, did you did you get some advice or you just thought okay i i have to do this because that that in itself was quite brave to do yeah yeah and and that that's the that's the one thing that i learned about myself from athletics so i took the you know the alchemist mind so the the good things that i took from it was that yeah. i have a i have a very strong like strong willpower i have a very strong determination and tenacity yeah. that inner fire within me and i'm like okay well what do i want right now i want to be happy okay. yeah okay, well what is happiness I have no idea. So I'm going to get as many books as I can and I'm going to read. <laughs> right, right. So you completely diverted it. your attention into kind of books and knowledge. Exactly. And it was like grad school for me. I just graduated university with a B, uh, commerce degree. And here I yeah. am reading books on happiness, positive psychology, and yeah. all these world leaders that we look up to them great. So I was, yeah, I was searching and I, I became a ferocious reader. I read more books than I did in university. It was, it was unreal. Um, yeah. And from that, I learned some, some good takeaways in terms of um, what encapsulates like happiness and, 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 and even the word flourishing well-being yeah. um, like there's positive emotions. There is um, being involved in uh, I guess the words engagement. So you're so lost in the, in your art and your work that time is, it, it flies by what feels like an hour. It's like four hours have gone by, like nothing. Uh, that flow state, uh, positive relationships, right? Like who you're around, who uplifts yeah. you, um, being part of something that's bigger than you, right? We're, we're, we're as, as yeah. humans, we are, we're, we're social creatures. We, we, like we strive with on community. Yeah. And then, and then the last one was accomplishment and achievement. So striving for excellence to be your best and that growth as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so it, it took me on this journey to just to have acceptance within myself Yeah. Um, and to really ask myself why, like ask myself hard questions. Why, um, why was it so important for me to make the Olympics? 
uh, what was the reasons behind that? And then once I started, you know, writing and, and journaling about Isn't it. Isn't that and just really such a it? powerful question anyway to ask yourself, why? You know, yeah. what, I mean, why? I mean, we, we, this is a three letter word that is so simple. But if we ask this to ourselves more, more than a few times, we will really kind of discover the, the root cause, you know, and I think mm-hmm. why is, you know, it goes back to purpose as well. You really have to dig, and it's not asking you why, it's asking you why on several occasions and several layers until you kind of really kind of peel down yourself and, and kind of reveal the kind of naked truth, I would say. Yeah, it's the most powerful question you can ask is why. Yeah. Right. When kids are growing up, they ask why, you know, why mom, why dad, why yeah. is this? And why is that? That's how you learn. And by saying why you're, you're expanding your book, your, your bookshelf, so to speak, to, to create that space, understand why, why is how we expand. So yeah, yeah asking, asking uh, questions like that was, was very helpful for me. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was on this path of just understanding, just, understanding myself learn more about myself and um and connecting with like-minded people you see this is much better now yeah so part two without glasses <laughs> there we go <laughs> <laughs> excellent so Hafiz you were telling me about this retreat that you had attended mm-hmm. yeah and there was this exercise that we did where we paired up and we did eye gazing right uh, so staring like powerful. for like a minute yeah, it was yeah. it was the most uncomfortable. Like I was like, whoa, this is this is intense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. exercises exercises like that, and yeah. the next one too was to. And isn't it that we don't? Sorry, you must interrupt. Mm-hmm. But isn't it like mm-hmm. we, we don't do these at university, college? We you know we're not taught these kind of basic kind of life skills. Or just no, just, not I guess, at all. Just to accelerate life, and um, you know, I mean, I'm a graduate as well in IT and management, and. You know, and I, and I look back at myself and my studies, it was a great place to form uh, uh, skills of negotiation or team building and, and friendships and, and learning, of course, your subject. A, the subject that you learn is never really kind of used uh, later in life, but just mm-hmm. basic skills like this. I mean, I, I did also this exercise as well that you're talking about, and it mm-hmm. was it was profound. It was not only that I learned about myself, but the person opposite to me, like, was so horrified <laughs> with herself she couldn't she couldn't uh, she couldn't like have the attention span for more than 30 seconds and she would giggle mm-hmm. or laugh but isn't isn't yeah. that uh, so explain to people what exactly that experience is because that is quite a, a powerful exercise if somebody wants to do that maybe with somebody else um you know after this podcast yeah, uh, eye gazing, it's, it's a yeah. powerful exercise. They say that the eyes is the gateway to the soul, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that's so true. It is, right? when, absolutely. Now mm. I can see you better without your glasses as well. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah it, absolutely. It's, so you literally a, kind of gaze into somebody's, powerful. like, a, a, a partner, another person, opposite for, it could be 30 seconds, it could be a minute, mm-hmm. it could be up to five, yeah. even 10, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's deeply it's 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 intimate, yes. right? And, and yes. even yes. even the word "into you," I see me, right? You see the yeah. reflection back, mm-hmm. right? And 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 from that, things will come up. Was the, like you know, like I I was like looking down. I was that? laughing. Uh, what did you learn from that? What did you learn about yourself from that experience? Just how much um communicating how much you can communicate just with the eyes without saying anything right body language mm. and just like i was just um <clears throat> having feelings of like of, of of love and like i see you and they were able to feel that and like this is this, this i was like whoa like yeah. this is <laughs> i think once you go past that kind of awkwardness and mm-hmm. then you start and people some people like when we did this exercise literally mm-hmm. in tears it's quite emotional i mean we, we were like what 500 women so obviously you know emotions galore and yeah. really tearful you know mm-hmm. real it's a real powerful and it would be interesting to see how men would react to that you know mm-hmm. um and see how the, how how what they learn about themselves it is yeah. it is it is profound it is it really is yeah like yeah. you're truly seen yeah exactly exactly yeah. just to have just pure attention and focus mm-hmm. isn't it 
no noise, no nothing, no distractions, just literal, like it's literally just focusing. And, and sometimes when with my partner, the lady that I was partnered with, I actually could, I could feel like she was talking to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that your experience? I felt like she exactly. was actually talking to me and I, w- I was having this conversation. I was like, I was like literally replying to her, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's, it's incredible how we communicate. It's not just our words, right? There's, there's the words and then there's the tone, but the body language, that's everything. Yeah. So after the, the eye gazing ex, uh, experience, yeah. so another, another exercise that we did, you know, it was still like, I still had a partner face, um, have an eye contact, um, was to share our truth, like something that is in our heart that we are vulnerable about. So it was in a space mm-hmm. where we could be vulnerable. And I shared like all the, the guilt and the shame that I felt uh, and the story behind my athletic, you know, not making the Olympics. And I, and I shared that it was very heartfelt and it was just such a, such a powerful release of emotions. Like I was in tears and I had like a, a release, a cathartic release of just like, I was carrying so much of that. And it was just such a, such a beautiful lesson for me to, that it's okay to share my truth and to be seen and, you know, and, and I'm heard and seen, and that was all I needed. Yeah. And I think that that is all that anybody needs to be heard Mm -hmm. and seen, you know, we're quite an advocate for mental health. So, and that, Mm -hmm. and I really wanted to make this podcast quite a a man's perspective on mental health, you know, because Mm -hmm. I think this year has been quite a challenge, hasn't Mm -hmm. it with, um, with mental health in general, but I guess for men who, you know, have this image of strong, you know, can't talk about emotions are, you know, some are financially, you know, stuck, uh, Mm -hmm. not doing as well, you know, and and it's just a ripple effect. And then coming home to families or in lockdown, such as there's so, so many circumstances in this year that we've learned. Um, Mm -hmm. What advice can you offer men regarding some kind of practical tips, I would say, when it comes to kind of mental health and how to kind of communicate better? Yeah. And, um, you know, one of the the, the words you know, uh, vulnerable, being vulnerable is Mm -hmm. often that is mistaken as a weakness, you know, like to show my emotions means that I'm weak. You know, that's a, that's a, that's a constant belief that's out there. Right. Especially for men, right. Like if you're crying, you're not just without being vulnerable. Right. So that's, that's the first thing is by you sharing your truth, um, you are um you're stepping into you you're showing yourself as you really are and that takes strength yes right that 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 takes strength exactly if people i mean like from the south asian arab culture as well i mean i think it's such a you know it's so it's not easily done that's what i can say you know the Mm -hmm. image and the the status and you know showing emotion is not something that you do you know yeah. and it's always I think it's in kind of inbred you know it's it's you know this is what we taught you know women can show emotions and you know men can't mm-hmm. and so you know from a cultural you know aspect as well for someone to open up and actually share their feelings mm-hmm. uh, and actually you know interpreting that as a strength it's it's courageous you know mm-hmm. and I think that that would that so that's the first step really kind of being vulnerable and, and opening up in that yeah and and even before that too i'll also say before the vulnerability is the awareness right being aware yeah just taking time and minutes out of your day just to be still right just to be with your are you by yourself in with my body how am i feeling right now okay Mm -hmm. let's see how it goes yeah um so i was saying that before the vulnerability piece is the awareness and the the awareness piece like when i speak to that it's it's how aware of you um how aware are you of your presence in your body right very often we're often in our heads we're too much into our heads. We're trying to, especially men, as men, we're, 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 we're fixers. You know, I, I got to solve problems. I got to fix this and finances and all these things and always problem solving mode. 
right? And that can lead to a that that leads to stress and uh, paralysis by analysis, right? All this information overwhelm and and trying to figure it out. That our awareness is up here that we forget that you know our body, our our hearts, our guts, right? Checking in there, right? So so with that. Um, that's why it's so important to take time, you know, whether it's five minutes or 10 minutes out of your day, just to check in with yourself. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, um, do you feel that, uh, a lot of people talk about meditation mm -hmm. as a, a real, you know, ingredient and, and kind of a starting point to begin the day. And it really yeah. kind of sets the tone. How do you feel that meditate? How can we encourage more men to meditate? Because it's something that um, they don't find as appealing. So how would how would we encourage one to meditate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with meditating, um, and and meditating is like sports. Honestly, there's there's yeah. different types of sports, right? There's different types of meditation. So you know, there's this perception that oh, we gotta sit in a lotus pose and, you know, make chants, like that's one technique of meditating. Yeah. Um, another, another one could be like, like, for me, I was a sprinter. I was a runner. Like running for me is a form of meditating, right? Going for a walk or movement, being out in, in nature. Um, if you can, the sound of water running, like I love the sound of, uh, of the river flowing so i'm not i don't live close to the river you know but i have i listen to sound that's meditative um music that's relaxing and calm and um breath work right your your, your breath breathe in inhale in for at least four seconds and exhale for four seconds and doing it in that count does it it brings your gets your head back into you it creates like a heart kind of rhythm, and brain isn't it? coherence it, yeah it kind of creates that exactly. rhythm yeah very much like box mm -hmm. breathing right because i think i always think that um i yeah. in the beginning of the year um have suffered some covid symptoms and i just put it down to jet lag and you know maybe it's just the weather and climatizing but i really did have symptoms and i always feel that with stress mm -hmm. and anxiety that the the best thing that works and that connects us to the present is your breath and as soon as you control your breath and create that rhythm again, I think it sets the tone and you come back into the present and you start to kind of, you know, calm yourself. And I think that for me, I, I think this is the biggest lesson that I've relearned. You know, so many things that we, we know, but we, we forget, isn't it? So I think that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I also have relearned, my, my learn how to, to breathe again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and also working out, exercising as well. You know, like it, it forces you to breathe as you're ex exerting yourself, right? Yeah. So it is a type of exercise as well, too. And yeah, yeah the, the breath is the key, right? Your breath is your intention. Yeah. Right? You're with, with, with everything, right? So that's... Yes. Mm -hmm. I love the word intention. I think that intentionality is where it all sets off. I think mm -hmm. when you start anything, I, I would say any task, any day, like literally anything has to come with the intention and if you set the intention and I think that everything else kind of flows but as long as you've got that clear pure intentions for me that is a word that I think that is it's so powerful um and um mm -hmm. it just sets the for me just sets the tone I just think everything encompasses that and everything else follows that so Hafiz you're telling me about your um meditation because i was just commenting on how soothing and calm your voice is um and you were just you just told me that you actually have uh something on your um that you've recorded for meditation so tell me more about that mm -hmm. because you do have a very sure. calming <laughs> relaxed voice and i was like oh uh, i could listen you. To completely you know <laughs> Thank you. I've been, um, yeah, I've, I've been getting messages on my Instagram about, um, you know, some breathwork exercise. And um, I also teach um, uh, Qigong as well, too. It's a form of meditation. Um, so I, I did a, so I decided to do an experiment and I did uh, a guided meditation on intention and love and gratitude. And um, I, I, re I released it about two weeks ago. 
actually on uh, on my Instagram. There's a link One, in the bio that's why I didn't can see it. To so it. yeah, so for everybody that wants to do any mm-hmm. guided meditation, and then we look at your, we'll connect and I'll put all the details of your Instagram as well. So better known mm-hmm. as Hafiz yeah. Alchemist. Exactly. Yeah, Hafiz yeah. underscore Alchemist. Yeah. So yeah, yeah check it out. Brilliant. Yeah. And so yeah, so we expect more of those then. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's, maybe that's, collection. Yeah, I already have three already, uh, so I'll I'll have more <laughs> different oh, themes, good. different themes. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've done some on grief, on on loss. Um, I have uh, there's one that I'm working on right now on uh, abundance, financial abundance. Uh, so that'll be the next one that I'll be releasing shortly. So look out for that. What is the best way that you deal with a doubt or a challenge? You know, obviously we've had many challenges this year. What have you faced and how did you deal with something? Oh, so in terms of dealing with challenges, hmm, one of the, one of the biggest ones is having, having your tribe. Right. So I have a tribe of, uh, of really good friends. Uh, I'm part of a men's circle as well. Too. And that has been, um, that, that's been absolutely valuable for me in, in terms of not having to, uh, to, to carry the load or to be like, uh, like a wolf, so to speak, where I got to just handle my stuff alone. Like it's, it's, a, it's a space where I can share and just to be seen and to be for, for men all over the world to come together, you know, every month we have like a open, open, uh, sorry, an online dialogue. Yeah. How helpful is that? I mean, I think there's much more of that and you're definitely one that has started, um, uh, kind of the initiative, you know, and I think this is what I really kind mm-hmm. of, uh, found very interesting about yourself is that mm-hmm. you've really kind of created that space for men, for, mm-hmm. for a space to, to speak, speak their minds, speak their hearts. How did you come up with that in, you know, that initiative and to listen so King, more about it? Yeah. So, so King of Hearts. So I've, I've always been an advocate for men, for mental health and, you know, wellness, right. That's, that's uh, a big, big part of it. Um, so there's a group uh, organization called King Kings of Hearts that my cousin and two other friends of mine started um, earlier. And it started uh, the way it started was, um, you know, they would have like a mastermind, like a weekly mastermind discussion on business and entrepreneurship. And one of the guys was just like, he had a lot on his heart that he wanted to share. And he's like, I, I need to, to share this. And it ended up being a very um, beautiful discussion that opened up all the men in the group and, and encouraged them to share more and to, 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 to feel better. And that's how King of Hearts started. Right. That's how it started. And, and, and my cousin, um, when I came back uh, to the city, to Calgary, he invited me uh, to, to join King of Hearts. And yeah, I've been involved ever since in this initiative. So yeah, that's, actually- I love it. I really, really, uh, I think that's, it's a great initiative. Oh, yeah. is, is that the logo? That's the logo here. Oh. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. Really, really great. I think that it's, you know, and I think there's much more needed. And I think where men can speak freely and openly, um, then sometimes, you know, uh, when they're in intimate, like I said, intimate relationships or in this in relationship where the the provider, the protector for them to kind of open up is probably not as easy. And why would you why? What's the main reason why a man can't open up to a woman, to his partner? I would say that it is, I think it's, it's, it's the, it's the patterns, right. From, from, from childhood and, and growing up in the environment in which um, a boy is, is, is taught to, to toughen up and to, to, to close up and any, any, any sign of, of weakness and vulnerability is, is, is weak. So that, that goes back to that, to that dialogue. The kind of childhood conditioning. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like every, I'm sure every, every boy is growing up uh, hearing the words, you got to man up, you got to toughen up, be a man kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like every, you know, every man growing up, you know, has heard the terms so to man up, to toughen up and not to cry or not to show your feelings. Um, and um, right. So that's something that is, is, is programmed into us that, you know, to show that is, is a weakness. Um, 
and um and in, even like manhood as well too right is this sort of artificial um essence that's created on top of what it means to be a man right it's more than just like the you know just having the the, the parts so to speak yeah. the anatomy right it's this like in 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 various cultures there's initiations that that uh, boys have to go through right to be a man right and we don't we don't have that in western societies right yeah. so um you know so that that's one that's one piece there that is 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 missing is that um in, in terms of uh of having mentors and, and elders as well too to to lean on to to, to help you know at, to help yes. in the process of this right yes so. I, I i guess it, the, your family structure and then your kind of your you know bigger community structure like it's a knock-on effect isn't it, it it's mm -hmm. it's much more bigger than just uh just the man itself you know or, or your childhood it's it stems from kind of uh, generations mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Exactly. so um how how do you deal with uh with challenges and what's the biggest challenge that you faced this year and how did you deal with it yeah the biggest challenge for me like with yeah especially with with uh the lockdown um yeah. is that i like i i need like i, I like having like one-on-one -on -one connections with people and 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 just um, just connecting and socializing the network with people. And that was, that was something like at the beginning of this year, that was something that, okay, this is not going to last. It'll be like a couple of weeks or so and it's dragged on. And, and that has, uh, it's created a lot of anxiety um, for me. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I have my tools with dealing with anxiety with breath work and meditation. Um, yeah. But also, um, but, but just, being heard just talking to someone that i can just having a dialogue just just to connect with people right yeah. that was one thing that i yeah that i that i really was craving uh in person not, not just in like zoom calls but just that like there's something different about being in person that was yeah really, you know but definitely i i've kind of felt it i i kind of the first lockdown we had in london i was mostly ill and recovering so i kind of didn't mm -hmm. feel it and then we obviously had the summer and stuff. It was nice. And then this time, I think we've all felt it because it's like one of these cozy lockdowns. It's really cold now and nobody really wants to go out and nobody's that active. And it, it's really started to, I think everybody's just now fed up. <laughs> they want it to end and they want it to finish. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I always think that allow those moments and motions to go, uh, you know, around, feel feel everything. And, and then, I, I guess then give it a cutoff then you know like then then get back into doing what you need to do but i think you have to kind of feel those emotions you have to yeah. you have to go with them right don't deny them and don't suppress Absolutely. them mm -hmm. that's that's the key right there is to be aware and to recognize it to acknowledge it because if you sweep it under the rug it's gonna you know it's gonna pile up and eventually it's gonna implode right so it's um that, that's why meditation is so important it's a way to it's like a it's like a pressure valve right you, you you gently just release a little of that pressure right before it you know explodes or shows up in a way um unexpected right yeah so i think that yeah i, I think like me, back to the first point that you made for me as well like whenever i'm styling or i'm coaching i always say you know Kind of know thyself is the most important there's no point of helping the world or helping x y and z or doing all these things until you kind of understand who you are and what you what you want to do you know what is the purpose and we go back mm -hmm. to purpose again i know that you talk about purpose a lot um but I, I always find that you know people don't know who they are and you know why where or what they belong to and what they stand for and you know that is probably the, the foundation the fundamental aspect of mm -hmm. anything you know before you continue to do great work and and fight wars and you know as in work uh, you know and 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 construct you know you know empires you must understand who you are yeah absolutely so that's, so that's mm -hmm. how how would you um, help somebody kind of figure out their purpose or their why mm -hmm. if somebody's well, the struggling is, with that 
yeah the first thing is is to take time for yourself right disconnect from your phone like no distractions at all just find a quiet place where you can just be alone with your thoughts right and in that space that's where you, you you'll get the answers the answers all everything that you need that you ever need is already inside of you you just need to just be still right be still as you can and just uh, you know, whatever comes up, you know, like anxieties and things like that and, and examine it. Where is this coming from? Right. And whose thoughts are those? Because you're not your thoughts. Right. And, um, and, and also like, where did you like even traits as well too? Where did you learn this from? Where did you get this? Is this projected onto you by other people that expected, you know, like, um, is it based on societal standards or is it because of, is that what you want to do? Right. So that's, that's one thing. And that's, it's, it's so introspection, introspection yes. right there. Um, I, I, think, I think this is the year and, where everybody has actually had the opportunity and forced, forced opportunity to actually be still and silent and, and to observe yeah. themselves. I think what a great year for, for learning and growth. I actually think it's it's a beautiful blessing and it's how you how you what is your yeah. uh, you know perceptions about this year but I believe that if it wasn't for this year you know we wouldn't we wouldn't be having this conversation but be you know how how important is it to to for future what we do in the future and how we are going to you know look at ourselves and it's a, it's a way to realign isn't it mm -hmm. exactly yeah. exactly Right, because if you're thinking about the future, it's it's, it's anxious, anxiety. Right, and if you're still thinking about the past and things that you present and and plan for the future too, like you still like, like it's it's not like oh I'm gonna live in the moment and just everything will work the way everything will work out you know just flow, flow along with it. No, you need that structure as well too as to this is where I want to go, and I'm gonna take actionable steps. Right, like what 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 is something I can do today? And tomorrow, something small, right? The small things that build up to get you there, to build that momentum. So it's it's those tangible, actionable steps that help you get there. Because by it's the incremental progress that you affirm it, you feel it. It's like oh, that feels good. Okay, then yeah, let me take another step, right? From that from that feedback, as opposed to, um. I need to make this much money and this is what I got to do in X amount of years, right? It's, it's, it's so far away and it's so like, well, how are you going to do that? How is this? And then it's going to create this dialogue of like anxiety, right? It's like, okay, this is what I want and I'm going to break it down into steps, right? So it's, it's, uh, and, and, and that, that takes time. And, and also I want to say as well too, with, um, like taking a time for yourself as well too. Like you don't have to do it all alone, right? Like we like connecting with uh, like-minded people or mentors that have uh, that have been where you want to go, right? Like connect with them and and they'll they'll share their insights and, what, and you can you, like that's the fastest way to grow. Yeah, yeah. I think it's um. I think so many people thought that they knew what they wanted and they had a clear picture of this is how life should be and all of a sudden you know their life is upside down and they're inside out and and it, they have to mm -hmm. like you said they have to go inwards and and the journey mm -hmm. itself as much as i love styling as love as much as i do everything but you know it all has to come from you know firstly what is your purpose and why are you here and then the rest will follow mm -hmm. um and and i think it's a huge opportunity this year huge opportunity for us to learn so much about ourselves and others and and you know kind of um reassess all the things that and prioritize things that we you know, we thought we did and um and 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 things that we gave too much importance and tension to really have a, a meaningless you know yeah and um oh, another thing is gratitude as well is also taking that time to take inventory for the things that you've done right like that you're proud of and um you know the relationships and all the experiences and who you are today like taking inventory of that and expressing gratitude 
Um, that's the number one thing that will change your state. It is impossible to be grateful for something while feeling anxious and depressed and any negative So gratitude, gratitude is the quickest way. <laughs> yes. And, and, and it's also, it's not like, uh, oh, I'm grateful for the sun kind of thing, but like thoughtful, like all levels of gratitude that is like, you know, it's, it's not, it's not on the surface, like really deep, really feel it. Where, where do you see yourself in the next five years then? What is it that you want to do um, when, you know, uh, with your program or, you know, the mm -hmm. work that you do, what, what else do you see yourself doing? In the next, in the next five years, you said? Yeah. Yeah. So in the next five years, I will have, um, I'll have a series of online academies. So I see, I'm a teacher. Like I, I, I've definitely come to accept that, <laughs> <laughs> um, that I am a teacher and I love, I love learning. I have a passion for learning. And one of the best ways to really solidify your learning is to teach it. To and um, yeah, so that's, that's what I do. And that's what I'm all about. So um, yeah, I'll be teaching. So currently I'm creating a course on online marketing. Right. right for people that want to get into business uh i'm also I, I love history as well too so i want to create an online academy on history right oh, like history wonderful. especially in uh so i'm from ghana originally so i want to talk about like uh, history in ghana history in africa african history uh create an online uh archive of of online courses where i'll have other other instructors as well so a collaborative environment so that's that's really what it is uh, about that 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 uh, trajectory that I see myself is it's about collaboration like coming together yes. um, and, um, and and sharing and sharing and helping each other grow so what, what's the that's, best advice that you were given by your teacher or a mentor oh the best advice oh it's, it's it sounds it's gonna sound like pretty simple but it's it's just simply um be willing right be willing to learn to being open right so empty empty your cup right all these preconceived notions and all these things like throw that out be empty and be willing to 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 learn and to to be curious yeah right? to be to be to have that level of curiosity and yes. always ask why <laughs> <laughs> yeah back to the why and, and i think a, a curious mind mm -hmm. is always a learning mind isn't it it, it once you're curious mm -hmm. about life i'm i'm like yourself i'm a, um, a forever student of life and learning and i think that when you're curious and creative uh, i think those aspects when it's uh, it's joined together then it's quite powerful and it, and there's there's a you know and you have to have aspect of kind of enjoyment as well and what you do because otherwise i think a it won't have any longevity at all but uh, mm -hmm. you must kind of really enjoy. I always always say, whatever you do, that enjoy it and and love what you do. Otherwise, it, there's no point of you doing it or you teaching it to anybody else because they will feel that you know straight yeah. away. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, wh where do you see yourself, like with mental health, and how how uh, what can we do to kind of there's one thing that we should be doing for next year, you know, how, what's the best advice that you can give us for next year and how to enter uh, the, the year with positivity and, um, you know, kind of excitement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, for, for mental health for sure is um, again, is, is uh, take time, take time for yourself, you know, whether it's 10 minutes, you know, before bed or first thing in the morning, take that time for yourself um, and just journal, whether it's to, to write uh, three things you're grateful for or what's on your mind, um, whatever it is you want to express in that space. Yeah. Right? So it's not so much, it's not so much about the techniques. It's so much about, it's, it's about the intention, that space that you create for yourself by doing that, that is, that I matter, I care about myself, I love myself, that I am filling up my cup so that I can have more capacity to share or to connect with other people with more empathy and compassion, right? So that's, 
that's the <laughs> that's the number one thing that I'll say for sure is is to create that space for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. However, like whether it's 10 minutes or it's yeah. That like as you do that incrementally, right? You'll feel the you'll you'll feel the benefits. You'll feel it immediately. Yes, yeah. there's so many that I think again uh, that have lost themselves, and and you know we get we we get swallowed by work. We get we you know we we're carers, the mothers, the wives, what, whatever role that you're playing, uh, mm -hmm. and whatever role a man is playing. But the fact is that we just we forget about ourselves, and I think that when that when you reconnect, I think that is so powerful, and then allowing ourselves some time. Is this a quote that? resonates with you or um that is powerful that you kind of live by or or, or that is kind of your your motto mm -hmm. um i'd say one of my favorite quotes uh how does it go i'm trying i don't want to <laughs> butcher it here uh but it says um wisdom tells me that i am nothing and love tells me that i'm everything and between the two is where my life flows. Oh, that's beautiful. Who's that by? That is by uh, Nahaj. I uh, can't say his last name. Mahara. I can I can send it to you. That'd oh, be, okay, yeah. okay. I know. I'll I'll put I'll put that in the podcast. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I was just thinking about your personality. Very calm, very collective, and and oh, and very you. very relaxed. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think that's all your practices that you've done in, in the last so many years that you've come mm -hmm. to the state, right? You've you've learned to be this way. Or have, were mm -hmm. you like this before, or or have you just begun? <laughs> no, not at all. I was, yeah, like I, I was an athlete for so many years because I had so much energy. I was bouncing yeah. off walls, and I needed an Adrenaline. outlet. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, people can change and, and I think that is, isn't that the most probably that's a great lesson itself that yep. like everybody has that capacity to change absolutely if you're willing uh and if you want to if you really want to you can change and anything is possible absolutely absolutely yes Changes. so thank you so much Changes for always possible mm -hmm. yes everything is possible I think that again attention and planning mm -hmm. and um preparation but thank you so much i know it's been a little bit of a robotic a podcast uh, but i i'm really delighted that you joined us on the podcast and uh and hopefully you know uh whenever you're in london then let us know hopefully next year is uh, is one of movement and motion and we can start flying uh, and visiting our friends and family uh inshallah and then um yeah you know, whenever you're in in london then do let me know We'll, we'll welcome you yeah thank you yeah thank you, thank you so take much care of yourself me. and yeah. uh and uh you know enjoy the rest of the year yeah thank you you too thank you Miriam. thank you <laughs> okay bye-bye <laughs>